Hi, Colonel Tex here with the fourth video in the series about installing Beyond Linux from scratch. So, the last video we managed to install a um, browser which works in the X Windows environment called CMonkey. Um, I'm going to go through installing a couple of desktop managers. One's called LightDM and the other one's called LXDM. So let's start by booting the virtual machine. So we'll log in as the ordinary user and use StarTex to start the GUI. As I said in the previous video, uh, for some reason the VBOX video driver seems to restrict the size of the screen that's reported to um, X Windows. So we'll just exit that and then restart X Windows to get the full screen up. So I'm going to start CMonkey in this little window again. And to get the grid up, let's try and place this in one go. That will do there. Uh, Ryan's going to check that every time we log in, so let's remove that. And let's go to Linux from scratch.org. In fact, what I'll do is I'll move this one over here to hide the login window just in case. I'll leave a bit of it showing, but just in case the um, I'll accidentally exit it because it'll drop everything. I'll use this window to uh, do the building. So let's just make that a little bit bigger. And you'll see any status messages come up in CMonkey here. Um, might be an idea to have. Yeah, let me. See what I'll do actually is I'll run top in this window. We can monitor the memory and processes running. Move that right over and I'll just reduce the size of the browser a bit so we can see the important parts. So we've got the four cores that are allocated and we've got the amount of memory that's in use and any swap that might be used as, used as well, so quite a good bit of information. <clears throat> so let's go to the sources directory to start off with and then BLFS. And back in the browser we'll go into the BLFS link. Oh, one thing we should do actually, let's um, Let's change the preferences and you see there's another window pop up here so we have to click on it to make it appear. Let's make it retain the, let's do the previous session. Restoring sessions and windows. Let's do restore all tabs because we may have more than that. Okay, so read online. In fact, let me test that. Let's quit. Go back here, rerun it. Yep, that's remembered where we were, so that's good. So we're going to scroll down to. So we've installed all of the packages in this section. We've installed some and we're likely to install a few more of the packages in this section, which is the X libraries. And what we're going to do is install these two packages, LightDM and LXDM. And the plan is to um, just install a couple of these. Um, I think I'll install Fluxbox and ISWM quite nice ones and then so these are quite basic um, 
display managers and window managers. What I'll do after that is I'll skip KDE because I'll do that near the end. We'll in uh, install some desktop environments that are a bit more, a little bit more heavyweight, but not as heavyweight as KDE. But they're certainly more heavyweight than the um, desktop managers and the window managers we're going to install. Because they've even got their own uh, apps. So we'll install XFCE. And then we'll go ahead and try out LXDE as well. They're quite nice. Um, things to well, if you've never seen them before, they're quite nice to experience. You you may decide that you quite like them. They're quite lightweight, but um, not 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 as lightweight as the um, managers we're going to install now. So let's start with LightDM. So as it says, it contains a display manager based on GTK. So let's quickly see what requirements we've got for this. So GTK3 we've got. Let's start listing these to be sure. Yeah, uh, libg crypt I think we've got. Pam we've got. PCRE we've got. Yeah, and we've got PCRE2. Object introspection we've got, right? Libex, Clavia we haven't got, and Valor we've got, and the other packages are optional. So let's have a look at this Libex, Clavia. <coughs> so Julib 2.583 we've got, Isocodes we've got, Libex ML we've got, recommended object introspection. So that's a good one to start with. So let's perch. You see, I'm typing this window, but it's underneath this window here. So to make this window at the top, I can't just click anywhere. I've got to click on the title bar to bring it to the top. So that pushes the one where this with the C monkey command line uh, behind. So this looks like a straightforward package to compile. So as before we can just highlight this and center click on the window and it pastes it in. Okay, so we can install that with make install. And that's installed. So bear in mind if this was a real machine, we'd just be sitting on the one machine up up to now, building beyond Linux from scratch. We've had to have two machines running. We've had the machine we're building plus an external machine which we've used to connect via SSH into the machine we're building up. But now we've got enough in place, we've got a basic windowing system, we've got a browser that's enabling us to cut and paste the commands. You could type the commands in, but some are quite complex, lots of symbols and characters, and it's quite easy to um, make a mistake um, unless you're checking everything. So it would slow, slow us up quite a lot. So this is definitely the, by far the best way to go. Okay, so that's installed. Um, how do I close this window? That X there, yep. So now we can download like DM. As I say, we've had the advantage that we spent a lot more time yesterday building all these other packages. Uh, again, some were optional at the time, but because uh, I've been through this before, I knew that some would be requirements. So you, you could, I think I mentioned this before, you could actually go through and install the bare minimum just to get a windowing system up and running much, much earlier but you'd then possibly be in the situation where you'd be building packages that were optional in other packages. For example, GTK3 was optional in some packages. It's now a requirement. You've therefore got to think to yourself, do I need to go back and install those other packages that had GTK3 as an option to take advantage of GTK3 because it's now on the system? And indeed, would 
that package expect to see GTK3 on the system if it knew it was there or if it knew that another package had use of it so it's probably the better way to better way to go is to install these libraries uh, these yeah these libraries and uh, packages up front at the earliest opportunity so let's get light dm that is tiny only half a megabyte Spell that right. So it says we need to create a dedicated user and group to take control of the light DM daemon after it's started. So we'll put these commands in as the root user to create that user and group and then come back to the normal user and we've got a big configure command here so let's inspect what options we've got okay there's no options listed so we'll just build it using the instructions as they are okay so this is complaining that it hasn't got light lib light dm object dash one sure what that is all right oh I've yeah <laughs> I've not realized I've only downloaded part of the package I did think that the name like the MGTK greeter was a bit peculiar um, so let's remove that directory and download the actual package itself. Let me just check that I haven't already downloaded it when I'm talking. No, I've only got the greeter there, so let's get the actual package. That's because I was scrolling down to see what the requirements were and this it's scrolled off the screen. I've missed it. So let's extract light DM. Yeah that package name looks a bit a bit more sensible now. Okay. Um the greeter is a program to present a graphical log on the screen. There are several alternative greeters, but the GTK Plus package is the reference implementation. So it will go along with the reference. Good idea. Stick to the standard. So we've done the group and the user for light DM. So we can now do this configure. And wait for it to build. So that's done. So we become the root user to install it. Okay. Go back to the normal user and we copy these commands to build the greeter. <coughs> Right, okay, it's saying EXOC source not installed. Oh, I thought that was an option that, yeah, it's an optional package, so it needs this for some reason, even though it says it's optional. So let's get that one installing. Let's create another X term. So sorry, I should explain what I did there in case you've not used this. Let's get rid of that window. I put the cursor over the, the background where, the, where it turns to an X. Left click and you see you've got an X term option there which brings up this framework that shows the size and gives you an idea where you can place the window. Just left click to place the window. So CD to sources BLFS. And what 
requirements have we got for this package? GTK3, we've got lib xfce UI. Right, we haven't got that, and we haven't got that one either. These are actually part of XFCE, I believe, these two libraries. So this will save us some work later on when we come to build that. And URI, we haven't got either. Okay, looks like that's a Perl module. And that needs tests, test needs. It's recommended, so we'll install that. Okay, so we can start building with this package. So we'll just copy and paste these commands in. And then sudo minus e make install. And we can come out of that and remove it. So that's that one. Just a list. So now we've got this URI we need to install, so copy that link. And same commands as before by the looks of it. So sudo minus e make install to install it. And it's okay. So lib xfe for util requires glib. We have optional gtk. So we can grab this. simple configure and make there's an extra switch there but that's for the GTK documentation the API documentation which we're not building so again make sudo e make install and that's done Right, libxfce for UI. This needs GTK2. We've got xfconf, we haven't got. And recommended is GTK3 with startup notification, which we installed in the previous video. So you notice now this browser is retaining the highlighting because I'm not in a private browser like I was before. It's, it's kind of helping to show where we've already been. DB dbus glib is already installed, that was installed in the previous video as well. So we can um, copy this and install it. And again, nice simple configure and make. And again, we do this sudo e make install. So now we can install this for UI package. Oh, yes, that's one thing with this. Uh, mouse moving over the windows you've got to make sure you don't move it away from the window otherwise you lose the focus and uh, your input will go somewhere else fc for you i yeah 
And again, it's a straightforward configure and make. That's done, so we can install that now. sudo e make install. And that's complete. Now we can build EXO. simple configure and install it Okay, so let's go back to the configure for LightDM greeter, which is this bit here. So let's recall that. We can get rid of the tar command. We're already in this greeter directory, so we can just rerun the configure and hopefully it will uh, now find that EXO. Program. Yep, that's worked now. So maybe that's something that's been overlooked in the book, or possibly it's something we've done wrong. Um, as to, I, I can't explain otherwise why they've got it as optional um, when it's obviously not optional. So that's done. So let's install that. Make sudo e minus e make install. and that's finished. So configuring we need to install a boot script from the BLFS boot scripts package. So let's come out of this, let's remove it as well while we're at it. And one, two, two. Um, let's do sudo CSU and then CD into BLFS boot scripts and we do this make install like DM and it says if the light DM boot script has been installed start like DM by running as root user so that will start it um, probably don't want to start it in this graphical environment so what I should do is close these windows down Um, let's shut this down. So come out of that. We can just quit on this one. That's actually off the screen, this window. Right then. Yeah, so just do Control D to exit. So we need to log out of BLFS, become the root, and then start it. So it's etc forward slash etc forward slash init forward slash light dm start. And there we go, we've got a graphical login prompt. So type BLFS. Right, it's not working for some reason. Maybe there could be some more configuration to do. Maybe to add us to a group or something. Let's try. 
Uh, no, I won't try the route actually. It's probably not a good idea. So now the only problem is how do we get back to the prompt? Well, what we could do is if we go to, let's make this an ordinary size. If we go to input keyboard, we can try doing a control alt backspace, which normally terminates the X window section session. And it has, but it looks like it's restarted it automatically. Let's try it once more. screen right that seems to have locked things up so what I'm going to do is go back to the window I'm going to get up a um, a prompt on the host machine and I'm going to turn it in uh, sorry not turn it uh, SSH in And what we can do here, we can do PS minus A to see, sorry, capital A, to see what's happening. Um, yeah, you see there's the login screen. There, is that it? No, it's not, not running at all, actually. What we can try to do is, uh, let's become the root. Do this. We can try and stop that service. Right, it stops, but we've still got our screen locked up. So I think the best thing to do is just reboot the machine at this point. And we'll go back into the graphical environment without start. Oh, actually, it's going to start when it boots. Come to think of it, because we've added the um, uh, we've got the start script, so it'll start automatically now. That's interesting. It hasn't started. Let's see if we can log in. Yeah, it's letting us log in, so maybe some more configuration or something we need to tweak. So let's go back to full screen on this and type start text. Again, it's got this tiny little window, says so do control D and restart start text. Okay, let's get top working on here. It helps prevent us closing that window down by accident. Let's load C Monkey on here again. Okay, the only difference is I didn't use this path. I don't think that's a problem. Let's just check that. So I used etc init.d idm and they're using rc.d rc.d Well, they're the same script, they're the same size. Ah, oh, right, okay, I should have read it further on. This is probably the reason why um, it failed, because it the uh, run level is still set to 3 which is just a text interface it needs to be set to run 5 which indicates that a um, graphical interface is running so I should try that really and it says here to make it permanent so I won't make it permanent let's log out again 
So control Q to quit C monkey and we'll just do Q on that one and control D to exit. So um Just trying to think how this will work now because I got that graphical front end up straight away. Maybe I'll have to do it in another window. Um, so I need to become root, start the services if it isn't already started. We can check the status of it, it's not running, okay. So there's that prompt. Let's go back to the SSH prompt. We'll have to log in again. Become oh dear. Become the root and type in init five. Let's see if that works. No, that's not working either. Okay. Oh, I see a net five actually switches light DM on and switching back to three turned it off. So I'm not sure why I can't log in. Yeah, I've had to start session. Let's try as a root. Although we shouldn't really log in as a root. Probably won't work. Yeah, it's not working either. What have we got up here? No, I can't explain why this is not working. A list of login D seats. Right, I can't get the uh, prompt back on the um, virtual machine, so I'm going to go for another reboot, I think, to get that back. I think I've just realised why this is not working. It needs a window manager to get a session with. And that's We haven't got any window managers yet. That's what the problem is. Oh, apart from TWN, come to think of it, that should be found. Um, no, I still can't work out why this is not working. Let's go back in. All oh, right, that's interesting. This has come up at the right resolution this time. <laughs> So let's get C monkey going. Let's get the top up here first. Agree to offers a list of available sessions. Well, it's not done that. Right, the list includes sessions which have corresponding desktop file installed under the user share sessions so maybe we haven't got one for TWM and there's no other uh, window manager or desktop environment installed so that could be the problem so let's have a look at this share X session see what's in there yeah the directory doesn't even exist so that's the problem I think there are no sessions for for the login manager to for the um, desktop manager to 
um, attached to. So we can leave that for now and when we do get a window manager installed we can test it then. So let's close, uh, shall I leave that up actually? Now we can come back to it if we need to do it. I'm just thinking if we need to make it permanent. Um, I will make uh, one or two of these permanent as we go along just to use. Um, it's the usual way you'd um, have the computer start rather than uh, typing star text each time. Although, of course, you could use star text if you so wished. But let's move on to the other display manager, LXDM. So this actually says it's a lightweight display manager for the LXDE desktop and we'll be installing LXDE um, later on. So let's begin by, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's go to sources, VLFS, uh, in capitals, and just see what is required. So we've got GTK Plus, got ISO codes, pretty sure we've got that LibRS GV. I thought we had. Right, must be typing it wrong. So we've got that console kit, and I think that was one thought I had we haven't got. No, yeah, it's not there. Okay, so that's one we've got to install, and we've got Linux PAM. Console kit is a framework for keeping track of various users, session seats, present on the system. Here's Dbus Glib, which we've got, Xorg libraries we've got, Linux PAM we've got, Polkit, pretty sure we've got, and PM Utils, I think, is one we'll need to install yet. Yeah. XMLTO we have. HD Palm optional. Well, actually, HD Palm is quite a useful utility if you're into uh, understanding what your disks are up to and tweaking the settings on the disks. So let's install that. Wireless tools, there's no wireless networking, so we won't bother with that. Okay, HD Palm. Yeah, HD Palm, you can set some parameters on the drive which could damage the drive, so. Um, just check when you do run it that the parameters you're using aren't dangerous. Um, but it, yeah, it's quite a useful utility to have. If you've never used it before, you can interrogate the drive to find out various things about the disks on your on your system. So there's no requirements for this. Let's just get it. Extract it and a simple make. Okay, so there's a note that by default HD Palm is installed in SBN as some systems may require it during the boot process before user is mounting. But if you want to install HD Palm in the user directory, then replace the above command with the following. So it's up to you really, I think I'll just go with the standard make install, that will, that will do for us. Make install, and that's done. I'll just go through a few of the options with HT Palm, quite useful as I say, you've got uh, minus i, if you put minus i. Okay, yeah, it's we put it in sys. Uh, SBIN, didn't we? So you've got to be the root user to do this. So let's become root while we demonstrate this. HD palm minus i, which gives you 
some information. Yeah, display drive identification. So I need to put in a drive reference to it. So we've only got one drive, dev SDA. Put that in, and as you can see, it's come up with some nice information about the drive. Obviously, it's a virtual one, but it shows what the um, virtual drive is um, emulating effectively. And so you can see the star, the asterisk signifies the current active mode, so it's on the fastest UDMA speed, it's got the geometry there, the buffer size, uh, and so on, configuration, the name of it, serial number and so on. And then if you have another look, quick look down here, we've got another I option in capitals with detailed information from the drive. So there you go, we've got it's laid out a bit neater as well, similar sort of information but laid out in a sort of tabular form. It tells us how many logical cylinders, heads and sectors which are not really, uh, it's not really appropriate way to uh, specify the size of discs these days as uh, discs are so big that this, this geometry is always, always um, bust. But the, as you can see the CHS is just that's the maximum number of sectors that can be referenced by that scheme. So the LBA and the LBA 48 are the modern ways of referring to the size of the disk. And it gives you an idea of the logical and physical sector sizes, the device calculating with a binary kilobyte or a decimal kilobyte, um, cache size and various parameters about what its capabilities are and what's selected as I said before that asterisk there and it shows what um, features are supported so it's got power management, write cache, look ahead etc. Checksum, I imagine that's some sort of firmware checksum. Um, and then a couple of other parameters which are quite useful are uh, T and little t and big T. You can see little t performs device read timing and big T performs cache read timings. And as usual with synth synthetic tests, you have to take them with a bit of pinch, uh, pinch of salt, but they can give you a good idea about um, the performance of a hard disk. Uh, so it would indicate the, uh, the status of the interface it's plugged into uh, as well as the physical capabilities of the disk so we can quickly run those two HD palm and you can put both of these switches on the same line slash dev slash SDA and you see it's doing one of the tests at the moment the cached one and buffered reads as well. So that, that can be quite useful just to see how uh, how various disks perform. There are other features I won't go through but um, I'll just pick out one or two you might be interested in. Um, these may be useful, these two here, if you want to script something like that into, you know, put that into a script to make the drive go to sleep um, there's also another one that's useful, I can't quite see at the moment, which is useful for um, mechanical hard drives, uh, ones that have a quiet setting, so they reduce their performance a bit, there it is there, the acoustic management, um, you can actually make the hard drive a little bit quieter uh, by redu reducing its performance. And as you say, it says you can get set the acoustic management, so we could actually just do that with a minus M. And it says it's actually not supported, but if we wanted to set it, we could do minus M and then a number according to the range that's specified there. See, so 128 is quiet, 254 is fast, but I imagine because this is emulated, it's a virtual disk, that's why it's not supported. 
Okay, so that's a quick run through of HD Palm. I'd say it can be useful to have around. So let's install PM Utils now. Right, so we need to do some kernel modifications here. So let's get another X term up. So again, if you go into the background, left click, select X term, move the cursor to roughly where you want the window to appear. And in fact, we can make this bigger by left clicking this icon and dragging down. So we need to become the super user. CD to source for slash sources for slash Linux. So this is the if you remember the Linux directory that was created when we first built the kernel in the Linux from scratch session. And we do make a menu config. Now if your um, window the terminal window is too small make menu config or complain it needs 80 columns minimum to run in you'll get a message like that and it needs 19 lines as well so looks like by default these X terms are wide enough and the reason why we're getting all these letters around is because the terminal uh, either the character set or the terminal is not um, compatible with the X term we're using so we could try to change that by now I think there's a command called TOE I can't yeah can't remember what that stands for now let's do less it might say at the beginning no it doesn't let's do manto oh table of term info entries that's what it stands for so what this command does it lists all the possible terminal emulation types that are on the system to be emulated and by default if you echo dollar trm that's the terminal so although we're running an x term it's it's possible that that's not quite compatible um, with the character set we've got so what we can do is look for another one um, so you could try something like uh, VT220 might be a good one to try. So let's try that. So do uh, export term equals VT220. Let's try that with menu config. Now that's gone to black and white, so it's even worse. Um, Let's try, I think there's one called Putty actually, which is the um, emulator that, or the terminal emulator that is used in Windows. No, it's coming up with character, so it's obviously a um, character set issue, so it's not something that uh, we need to worry about too much. So let's go back to the next term. It just makes it look a bit untidy and a bit harder to read things. So if we go back to this power management and ACPI options, that's the fourth menu item down. So if you select that with the down arrow and press enter. And we've got to make sure that the suspend to RAM and standby is built in, which it is. And hibernation, aka suspend to disk, is built in, which it is. So we've got no changes to do there. So that's all right. We don't need to do a rebuild of the kernel or install it or reboot or anything. So that's fine. So let's go ahead with installing the power management utilities. Have we got any configuration alterations? No. So we can just copy and paste and configure and make commands. Right, that's done. sudo minus e make install. And that's done. If you don't have XMLTO installed, copy the pre-generated main pages as a root user, which we 
have got it installed and then it tells you how uh, configuration can be done okay so now we're going to console kit and it's saying here the big warning if you do not install Polkit, you'll need to manually edit the console kit com file to lock down the service failure to do so maybe a huge security hole so luckily we have got Polkit installed so we're not going to leave ourselves exposed to that that issue so let's grab this and extract it and again note that the file name begins with a capital letter which is not the norm and install so we've got a few options here so we've got enable udev acl allows normal users to access device nodes normally accessible only by root so that's a, sounds like a good thing enable pam module we want that because we've got pam installed enable poll kit well judging by that warning that's something we definitely want within it rc dir we want that because we're we want this uh, location uh, fixed in this script and we're not using system D so we do want that enable doc books use this switch if XMLTO is installed you wish to build the user and API documentation well we don't want the API but you may want the user documentation so let's include that in the configure Oops. Right, let's see how that fares. Okay, so there's a status of uh, what the configuration has found and what it's going to do. So it's going to build the documentation. It's got poll poll kit support, and it hasn't got Solaris support. So that's okay. So we just do make. It's done so sudo minus e su and install it and that's done so for linux pam we've got a configuration file if you use linux pam it needs to be configured configured to activate console kit upon user login this can be achieved by editing the etc pam the session file system session file so this gets appended You'll also need a helper script that creates a file in var run console named as the currently logged in user and that contains the dbus address of the session. You can create the script by running the following commands as the root user. So that's done. So let's tidy that up. And now we're in a position to install LXDM. So it says first of all fix some uh, files, some fixes. So I'll just copy all of that, paste it, and then install LXDM by running the following commands. So let's just check what we've got here with Pam. We want the system D system unit there. No, we don't. So it looks like we just take this configure and make as it is. And we can now install, let's make sudo e make install, and that's done. Configuring LXDM, so it's got scripts again to run, so really we should only have one of these. Um, desktop managers running 
So what I'm going to do is um, go, let's get rid of this directory first, clear up first of all, next DM, become the root, go into the BLFS boot scripts directory and what I'm going to do is to remove, so make uninstall um, light DM, we'll get rid of that one. So that's removed the boot up scripts for light DM and now we can install the ones for LXDM and the reason why I'm choosing this one in preference over light DM is because um, LXDM, the display manager and LXDE, the desktop environment, uh, go hand in hand. Right, so configuration information, the LX daemon, LXDM daemon configuration file. Specifies options that include numlock on off, background image, etc. So some configurations you can do. And it says you can also set a default session by uncom commenting the line session equals user bin start LXDE with the session of your choice and it tells you what it is for a GNOME session, open box session and an XFCE, XFCE session. It's also possible to set the preferred session on a per user basis by editing the .dmrc in the home directory for each user by adding that little bit. So again as before um, we can start LXDM with the script, the boot script, then we can change to init5 and we can make these changes permanent. It just says here one important script executed after login is etc. LXDM X session which we have fixed to fit BLFS specification. So I think um, there's still not going to be any, no, there's still no X sessions directory. So we can test this anyway to see what we get, but we're not going to be able to start a session as there are no um, actual window managers or desktop environments available. Um, so let's get rid of that tab. We'll quit CMonkey, quit that screen, come out of root here. come out of route here as well, close that one down and we'll just quit the desktop now by control D on the login X term. We come root, start that script, so etc. Let's do the one they've specified, I don't think it'll make a difference. Um, and this is LXDM start. Okay, well, this one looks a lot better already. It's a nice graphical screen. So we'll click BLFS, type in our password. Yeah, again, this one's just, uh, it's, it seems to be working, but it just can't find anything to latch onto. Um, and in fact, this uh, list here is it's grayed out because there is no uh, desktops or window managers to pick from. So that is the problem we've got at the moment. There's no, um, no, no way of going any further than this with this login. So all we've got now unfortunately is a reboot or shutdown. So what I'm going to do is bring up a, um, let me minimize this first. Yeah, let's log back in via SSH. Uh, sudo to the root. And let's try doing init3. See if that brings back anything. No, it doesn't. So init, were we already init3 maybe? No, that's not affecting that. 
All right, yeah, that's it. So I think what it is, we started the script when we're in init, init three, but the script doesn't update the init status, so we change it to five and then back to three, and that seems to have uh, stopped that script. So let's just see the status of it. Yeah, it's not running, so that that is what's terminated that script. I suppose alternatively, we could have done a stop against that boot script. So I think the thing to do now is to move on and um, install a couple of window managers and just by installing the first one, the um, desktop manager will have something to, uh, a, a session to start up and uh, it will look a lot, not more like a real um, GUI system. So let's come out of root, go back in as BLFS and start the GUI. Let's just set this all up again. So C monkey. Oh, let's get this top going. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so CD to the sources, BLFS again. And now we're going to have a go at installing Fluxbox window, ma window Manager. So what does this need? This needs X Window System, we've definitely got that. Dbus, we've got Freebidi, I think we ins we've installed that. Yep, and imlib2, I don't think we've got that one. No. And if you wish to use other image formats in addition to XPM, well, that sounds useful because XPM is maybe not that popular. Although it it is more of a sort of Linuxy type image format, as far as I'm aware. So imlib needs libpng. We've got that. We've got libjpg turbo. We've got libtiff. We've got giflib, and that's external to BLFS. So I think we can install this I've just realized of course I'm copying this link we could now actually save these links using the browser as long as you remember to put them into um, the well, there's no way of getting to the root system here, is there? Let's type in here. As long as we remember to go to sources and then BLFS, so we could do it that way. So maybe we can try that with the next one. So we've got imlib. So let's extract it. I don't know why that's appeared in the way that's all right, it's gone now. Let's see deep. So this looks quite straightforward to build. Okay, so let's um, become the root to install the package. And it's done. So now we should be able to install Fluxbox. So let's try and save this link here. Let's reduce this down a little bit. And we want to 
account sources. Is it going to go in there? Yeah, BLFS. I'm going to write that download was the name of the file, was it? That's interesting. I can't click behind this window either. I don't know if this is a limitation of CMonkey or just me. Let's copy that. Let's try this again. Sources. LFS. Double click that. And let's paste the name in there. Okay, all right, we've got a little download manager window as well. How nice. So let's leave that behind there. So we should be able to just extract that now. Fluxbox. Yep, that's there. All right, file format is not recognized. Okay, didn't like that. Maybe maybe it's because it's from SourceForge. I know they do lots of redirections. Let's try saving the FTP file. That'd be a bit more direct. And an error occurred. No, this didn't look good at all, does it? Um, let's open this link in a new tab and see what that does. Oh yeah, it's taking us. So it probably recognizes we're in a browser and it's going to automate the downloading of the script. It's not giving us a link or anything. I imagine it could detect that we've been downloading from wget and just gives us a link straight away and just downloads it. So it may be actually quicker to download with wget because it's making us wait doing it this way. Right, let's try it in here with wget, let's remove the old file. Yeah. It's a lot quicker. So let's forget that idea. So let's try and extract it now. That's better. And we've got a simple configure and make. Right, so that's built. Let's install it. And now we're ready to configure it. So if Fluxbox is the only window manager you want to use, you can start it with a .xinit uh, 
RC file in your home folder. Well, it is at the moment, but it won't because we're going to install others. Um, or alternatively, if you use a login manager like GDM or LightDM, we'd like to be able to choose Fluxbox at the login prompt, create Fluxbox desktop. So ideally, if you know you've got a preference for a window manager or desktop environment, this would be the best way to go. Or you could even um, make that setting system wide and put it in, I think it's ETC. Uh, ETC uh, X11, that's it. And then there's, yeah, I think there should be a directory there called X in it. Think you may have to um, do some modifications with the profiles to get this to work. Um, well, maybe under app defaults on here. I'm sure, is that I come from a Gen 2 distribution and things are done a certain way there and they're done a different way here. Oh, actually, there, there's the file there. Yeah, it's in a different place. That's the file you'd need to modify and put start flux box in that file to make it system wide that all users would start with um, the particular desktop environment you, you wish to use or wish to impose on the system. But this would be on a per user basis so they could override that setting. Um, in fact, we can have a quick look at that. Let us see. That's why it's not finding. So you can see here we've got TWM being started, the X clock, and this geometry tells it whereabouts on the screen and what size it is to be um, placed. And two of the X terms, and then lastly the X term is the login X term. So that would be the place to put that. Obviously, disabling these. Unless you want these appearing, but TWM is the one you'd want to disable in place of start flux box. But because of this demonstration, we're installing several. Um, well, we've installed two desktop managers. We're going to install a couple of window managers and a few desktop environments. Um, we'll use this method here where we can choose which um, environment we want at at start up, at boot up. So let's become the root again and paste in this script. So this is the sessions directory that doesn't exist at the moment. So it's being created and then one of these desktop files for Fluxbox is being created with some settings in it. To, uh, so that means that login screen will be updated with a Fluxbox session available. Um, so now it says create the Fluxbox configuration files and this is for the user. So let's come out of the root, add those in. To generate the application menu first you may wish to run Fluxbox generate menu minus H in order to choose any user options then issue. Ok so let's have a look at the user options. Oh, there's quite a few. Um, not really sure what to use here because I don't normally use this, but let's just put in Fluxbox generate menu. Oh, hang on. It says alternatively copy a pre generated menu. Let's go with that. If you want to use an image as your desktop, back desktop background, Copy the theme you like into Fluxbox and add line to a correct image. So um, I haven't got any themes, uh, so I don't normally use this one, so I won't, won't do that. But obviously, there's something you can do if you're interested in um, customizing uh, Fluxbox. So that's Fluxbox installed. So I suppose the best thing to do now is to test it all. So let's get rid of that window, get rid of the browser, quit that and do control D. So 
so we need to log in as a root now on the virtual terminal and we need to start um, LXDM so there's our login screen you notice now in this desktop pick box we've got default and if we click the arrow which is not grayed out anymore it's actually black so it is enabled we've got a flux box entry so we'll select that click on the BLFS type in our password and bingo we've got a workspace and you can see if you've right click the workspace you've got the menu there with some programs that we've already got installed we've got Xterm it's found CMonkey there's terminals under Xterm so it's obviously picked out Xterm as our favorite because it's the only one browsers it's found CMonkey and the text browser as well IRC something called Ninja or is that the Ninja build system I'm not sure FTP it's found the FTP command editors it's found Vim and the shortcut Vi um, multimedia it thinks the crocs a multimedia item I suppose arguably it could be not sure what that does it thinks the crocs an office item again it could be system tool top let's run that one yep yeah, that's opened a little window uh, next turn with top and then we've actually got a, a menu to configure looks like we can set styles got four different workspaces to choose from I presume you can move yep you can change between these four arrows these arrows between the four enter a command and so on so it's a uh, it's a very lightweight desktop environment or window uh, window manager manager sorry um, uh, but it's uh, got you know quite enough features just to be getting on with day-to-day -day stuff you know you might do the uh, um, web processing or web browsing from here quite quite happily all day long so we can carry on here um, building the rest of uh, the packages got installed so the next one I'm going to install is IceWM which is the ice window manager so again I'll leave, leave this top here we can just keep monitoring that I don't think there's going to be many packages where we can fear that we're running out of memory but it's also nice to see that all the cores are being used when we are compiling so let's get CMonkey up so that's remembered its size settings will looks of it but of course because we've got a taskbar now the bottom of it is just off so we can't pick up any corner or edge here it has to be this bottom one you see it's got these little lines at the bottom so it's probably one of the reasons why it's lightweight it's a bit thin on the ground for usability but the usability that's there is is enough to make it usable and now let's get remember this is right click to get this menu up on the desktop let's get a next term oh, that doesn't look good not sure what that's about let's um just log in at the prompt So do SU minus BLFS. Yeah, I'm not getting that there, so that might be an issue, some configuration with um Fluxbox. Yeah, there's no indication as to where it's coming from. Let's try see if that one does the same. Yeah, that's the same. Well, we'll see how we go. I don't think it's going to cause us an issue. So let's go to IceWM. And we better go to Sources, BLFS, so that we can check. I think we've got this GDK PIX buff. GDK, yep, we have. Fribidi, we've got. Libs Sound File, we've got and also we've got so this is one we can install straight off right 
Right, so we've got some extra switches here. These two switches permit ice sound to be compiled. That sounds quite interesting. Presumably it's some sound manager for the ice window manager. Oh, perhaps we've got a copy of the... Uh... Okay, so this one, the focus doesn't change with the mouse. You have to actually click on the window to get the focus. So let's copy that. And it looks like center clipping doesn't gain the focus either like it usually does. Um, so let's grab that. And enable core fonts. Use this if, if you wish to be able to use the old X11 core fonts instead of the font selected by font config. Right. I don't think we want that. I think you probably have the ones you've selected in the font config. So let's try that. Okay, and we can now do make. Okay, uh, and usually they're removing the X sessions from the or the desktop file from the X sessions directory and they don't seem to be replacing it, so uh, not quite sure why that is, but let's go with the instructions anyway. So let's install the package. And configuration so as before if it's the only window manager or desktop environment you're using you can um, start it with your own personal X in it RC uh, we're not going to do that so we'll go to this bit oh this is for yeah this is for personal configuration files so we need to become the ordinary user again so control D paste that in you can edit this file to meet your requirements in particular review the preferences of this file. You can use log out, restart ISWM on the main menu to load your change preferences, but changes to the background only take effect when the ISWM is started. So you can either modify the traditional menu files to suit your requirements or use the newer ISWM menu FDO described later. So it describes has create a menu system there. Alternatively, you can create a menu which conforms to the FDO desktop menu specifications. Unlike most window managers, ISWM does not search for programs when the menu is invoked, so if you take this route, you'll need to rerun the following command after installing or removing programs. So it doesn't sound the most helpful of things, but we can run this anyway. And if you wish to put items on your desktop, you need to install a program such as Rocks Filer, which allows you, which provides a pinboard, and you'll no longer be able to access the menu by right-click on the desktop. You'll have to use the ISWM button. So we won't do that. So there's some shortcuts here. And looks like that's it. So let's tidy that one up. And we'll come out of that one to control Q to quit that. And let's just log out now. Exit. So it's taken us back to the menu. Yeah, we've got a nice WM session that's appeared in this desktop pick box. So we can try that one out now. Log in, and there goes a startling 
background. So we've got, we can actually jump directly to any of the desktops. What's that do? That lists all the windows. That probably minimizes them all, that one. Also got a clock on the bottom right, and I think these are, yeah, that's the memory, and I think that's the process usage, so that's, that's quite a useful thing to have as well, uh, doing what we're doing. So this looks more like a, a normal um, interface, more used to, like an old Windows type interface. You can see we've got an extra terminal that's been put in there. We've got a cups link to manage printing because we installed cup. Highlight was one of the packages we installed in the last video. There's a help there. There's something to do with how the windows are focusing there and there's some themes here as well. So let's get browser up. We can try some of these themes to see which ones look nice. Let's actually get um, terminal up. Let's see what the UX term looks like. I don't think it looks much difference to be quite honest. No, we're still getting this error for some reason. They look identical. There may be some functionality differences between them, but um, we'll stick with next term. You see this um, uh, window manager has got the capability to resize from any any location um, flux box would only allow you to resize from this corner here, but we can, you've got icons changing depending on the north, south, east, the west border and the corners as well, so we're not, not limited as much, but this is still quite a lightweight, um, lightweight desktop, uh, window manager. Uh, and also we've got down the bottom of the screen here, it will appear about here if I do it again, when you're adjusting it's giving you information about the window so it's saying that it's uh, 80 columns wide 59 lines and the 950 plus zero is the number of pixels along and the number of pixels down so if I move that down a little bit uh, I don't know if you saw that the second number jumped by 16 so it's just some feedback on the dimensions of the windows which might help for the layout so now let we've got that up let's just have a quick look at the themes see if there's any nice ones to look at so that's a kind of blue background looks like everything's changed there slightly colors have changed ice desert was that in Fadel 2 Oops. Overloaded that is in ergonomic. Don't look much difference, but I'm sure there's a subtle difference. Metal two. Yeah, that looks quite quite a dated one. Motif is a traditional theme in Linux. Nano blue. Well, that's got quite a nice background, but it looks fit and quite nice, like a neon style so I might choose that one there's just one more which looks like it emulates Windows 95 if uh, you've been a Windows 95 user in the past and you want that retro feel yeah, it does look a little bit like it with the icons up there so I'm gonna go back to the nano blue that looks quite a nice slick um, skin to put on the interface so that's the two desktop managers um, I'm now going to install, um, let's see what should we do next, I think I might leave the other two desktop environments, gonna, I was going to do XFCE and LXDE, um, I think I might leave them for now and jump straight into a package that's probably uh, probably a bit irrelevant these days um, is X screen saver it was designed originally to save the old CRTs from burning um, to give 
um, you know, to keep the screen active for when the, um, rather than just leave the screen like this with light, bright bits on the screen where it could burn the phosphor, screensaver would kick in after five or ten minutes and display something interesting on the screen. And it says here, uh, it's just goes with the philosophy that attended monitors should always be do unattended monitors should always be doing something interesting like they do in the movie as well. <laughs> I'd say that's a bit arguable. Um, especially these days of uh, energy saving and so on. If you're not at the monitor, yeah, maybe you might want the screen saver for five minutes or so. But ideally, you'd want the monitor to power down with the, which is what we've got the PM utils. And indeed, if I left this, it would power down and go to a black screen. But it's uh, quite an interesting package in, anyway, um, just as a, a novelty. So I think might install that now. So let's see what we've got. Uh, let's go back to sources and BLFS capitals. So we need libglade, I think we've got. Yep. And outsorg application we've got. I think we've got glue too. Yep. W one hundred DPI font Libx font and PC. So I'm not sure if we I presume if it's part of this package, yes, we've got that. So we can go ahead with the build, so let's copy the link and fetch it and extract it So we've got a sed command to run. And then we've got, what's this here? This switch allows some demos to be installed, set your ID root, which is needed not to ping other hosts. So let's put that in as well. Okay, so let's build that. Okay, so that's complete. We can uh, install that now. And that's complete. So we just need to add a configuration to allow it to work with PAM. done. So now we should be able to, if we right click the desktop, um, is it system, uh, how do we get this, I can't remember how to get this up now. We 
use one of these. Yeah, we may have to wait until we've got a um, well this actually this might do it let's try running that one yeah this is okay uh, right saying the demon's not running now do you want to launch it now well yes we can but I doubt if we'll use it so what we've got here is um, you've got a list of all the screen savers down there's numerous there's I don't know, 100 or so and you've got a preview uh, panel here in the centre and you can just highlight any of these you can see one's running now which is which ones it's picked V feedback and basically you can just highlight any that sound interesting and uh, you can see the preview on the right and the ones that are ticked are the ones that will be activated when the screen saver is activated after you know when you've left the terminal for a period of time you can see it blanks after 10 minutes and it cycles these um, the selected screen savers every 10 minutes and you can see the mode is to run a random screen saver and there's various other uh, options there so it's quite some of these are quite interesting you can spend um quite a long time here just looking at them and um adjusting them as settings button here so you've got a frame rate how big the gears are how fast they can be going um, there's a pong one here again settings they're all different different settings for each one quite uh quite thorough one called shade bobs, it's like sort of neon worms. Uh, tessellated images, quite unusual one. Tangrams, looks like it's going to build up some tangram pictures. Yeah, <laughs> it tells you what it is as well, in case you couldn't recognise it, and so on. So that's, as I say, it's quite quite interesting. I think these ones that come up with this little fire logo in the in a monitor are ones where you can um, attach a picture maybe not I thought that's what that meant advanced or oh, maybe you can attach it to the picture you want the image you want appearing there with the command line so I thought just add that in as a purely a bit of entertainment And you can actually preview it full screen. So if I choose another one, uh, I don't know, Hilbert, you can preview it full screen, full screen, and it'll go full screen and show you what you'd see if it really was activated. And just press Escape to come out of that. So that's that one. Um, I think I'll call it a day for this video. Uh, we've done two desktop managers and configured them. Oh, uh, one thing I will do actually is to um, configure the system so that we're all automatically set to log in uh, with a graphical uh, login screen. So let's go back to um, where is it? Back here. Yep, back to LXDM. It's the one I'm going to use. Down the bottom, it tells you what changes you need to make to the init tab so that um, when the scripts will start automatically at boot time, so LXDM daemon will be loaded and the init tab this changes the init level from three to five which indicates that the current init level is the current run level is is five which is the graphical uh, screen so we just need to run that in here as root let me 
get rid of the screensaver source directory now that we've done with it. Paste that in. Okay, so if we view that, oh, it's a bit hard to view, but you can see this here ID 5 in it default, that's the uh, default run level. So that was a 3, that's what's been changed to a 5 to show it's a graphical login now instead of a text login. So uh, let's quit that. Control D. That's interesting, that's not exiting. I'm not sure if it's supposed to or not, but we've got a, an X we can click here. Uh, let's go back to the index for next time. Control Q there. And then we can log out. We'll close all active applications. There is none, so it doesn't matter. Now let's quit. Click the quick click quit button here. Let's do an actual shutdown. And you'll see it's automatically shutting down the computer for us as a normal distribution would do so. And there we go, we've powered off. So now let's start it. Let's test to make sure that it works on power up. So we're starting the machine. Right, again, the screen has defaulted to the shrunk down size, but that's not a problem because as soon as we log in with our ISWM session, you see Fluxbox is still there if we decide to use that. But as soon as we log in, press enter. Oh, it hasn't switched. I thought it would switch at that point. Right, so logging out has reset the display so we can log in again. It's only that first instance it seems to do that on this virtual box. I've never seen that before. Um, so there you are. We have the uh, desktop for um, LXDM. Sorry, I, ISWM, beg your pardon, the uh, um, window manager. So one other thing we haven't tested, what we can do now is to see if the reboot option works here. So let's click that and see if it actually restarts the machine rather than just shutting it down. Yep, that looks like that's worked. And funny enough, it's retained the uh, full screen this time. Very strange. So let's just log in again. And yep, that's fine. Make sure we can load uh, some application. See Monkey. That's good. That's loading. So I think we'll just shut it down now. Log out. Click quit. Shut down. And thank you very much again for watching. Um, next time we'll do um, a couple of desktop environments, XFCE and LXD. They're a little bit more involved. Uh, they're a little, little bit more heavyweight. Uh, they have some. They have some applications that go along with them, so they'll be added into the system as well to use by by anything. Yep. Thank you very much, and uh, see you on the next video. Goodbye.